Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU says Greece must keep control of privatisation effort. European Union to boost anti-piracy efforts in West Africa. European Union grants Tanzania $62 million in budget support. EU cannot lose the Ukraine. Plus, Europe's secret Syrian agenda. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, Greece absolutely must retain control of efforts to privatise government-owned real estate assets and raise cash to pay back its debts, according to the European Union's executive arm. The ownership of this process rests with Greece, European Commission spokesman Simon O'Connor told reporters in Brussels. In the next review mission, which will take place in the coming weeks, we will clearly discuss the state of play of the privatisation process and look at how that can be taken forward more effectively. So let's interpret this then. The IMF Troika lends loads of money to Greece, which can't afford to pay it back. So the Greek government gets lent on to close down public services, sack workers and seize assets. This still doesn't pay the debt. In fact, the debt burden simply grows bigger. So the proposed fix is to lend Greece more money and increase the debt. Folks lose their homes, house prices fall, nobody wants to invest or buy into Greece, so the value of its assets falls through the floor. Then the charitable, friendly EU benefactor tells Greece to sell its assets for cents on the euro. A tragic play of misfortune or an exercise in economic warfare and asset stripping? I'll let you decide. The European Union said Wednesday that it was preparing to increase security efforts in the Gulf of Guinea, the West African maritime region that has become a global piracy hotspot. The new measures, likely to be announced in October, will however not include sending warships to the region, a move that helped reduce pirate attacks off East Africa, said German Rear Admiral Jürgen L, who heads an EU military working group for West Africa. The story goes on to say, The Somali situation is totally different to the problem in West Africa, Jürgen L said when asked if EU ships could help in the Gulf of Guinea. Well, that's interesting, don't you think? EU ships. The EU doesn't have any ships or military. They belong to the individual member states and are controlled by them, aren't they? I mean, I thought the EU was a trade bloc. What business would it have founding an EU military? Unless, of course, it was trying to become a nation-state in its own right. The European Union has pledged 101 billion shillings, that's $62.4 million, in direct budget support to Tanzania for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. These funds are intended to support the government of Tanzania to reduce poverty and achieve the Millennium Development Goals, said the EU ambassador to Tanzania. All this support, envoys on the ground, offices, investment, who would have thought the European Union, with all its internal woes, would or indeed even could be such a benevolent philanthropic partner with Africa? Now don't get me wrong, supporting the people in Africa should be close to everyone's heart. But I ask you, is it better to give a man a fish or to teach a man to fish? Ukraine is important for the EU, agreed European Union's High Representative of the Union of Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Catherine Ashton, and Estonian Prime Minister Andreas Ansip during their meeting in Tallinn on August 26th. Both politicians expressed hope that the Ukraine would also make efforts to conclude the association agreement in November this year during the Eastern Partnership meeting in Lithuania. The Ukrainian government was firm in its decision to integrate with the European Union and was not choosing between Europe and the Russian-led customs union. Nevertheless, it's been noted that Russia has been employing efforts to expand and promote the alternative economic area, the customs union, and pressing Ukraine to join it. 
And interestingly, the Western press fully ignores the term the Eurasian Union, calling it a Russian-led customs union, which frankly it isn't at all. The objective is to create a counterpart federation, and it should also be noted that the formation of a North American Union has been on the agenda for many years too. Think the new world order and global government isn't happening? Perhaps it's time to take another look. I wonder how the history books will record the Syrian conflict. Will it be lost to the archives like many civil wars of the past, or will it become a celebrity of destruction like Libya, Iraq, Vietnam or Iran? I suppose the answer can be found by asking the question who will get involved and why. When you dig into the players' backgrounds and their motivations, you realise the USA stroke Russia situation in Syria isn't about what the media is reporting. This is about who gets to run a huge natural gas pipeline through there. Russia maintaining their monopoly on natural gas to the EU, or the Qatar Saudis trying to break that monopoly. The Qatar Saudi group is mostly paying for the rebels, who are in the main jihadist mercenaries, in the hopes of accomplishing the monopoly break, and as we know from history, they are not above pulling a false flag operation. Hat tips go to Doug Coulter on Google Plus and Tyler Durden at Zero Hedge for this article. The full story, which details the Europe-Russia-USA connection, is in our Articles and Essays section on the website, and the links are below. Today in our video library, we look back at the developing relationship between Russia and the EU, as President Vladimir Putin met with Hermann von Rompuy and Manuel Barroso. In discussion, Mr Putin urged the European Union to speed up the process of visa-free travel between Russia and the 28-nation bloc. The announcement came after the two-day summit in St Petersburg. After four years of talks, the two powers still strongly disagree on issues ranging from energy supply to trade regulations, making it difficult for a new framework agreement to be reached. The EU wants the Kremlin to fight against corruption and strengthen the rule of law in order to improve Western private investment. Russia and the European Union are strongly linked. Europe is heavily dependent on Russia's energy exports. Russia has increasingly demanded European goods to meet growing demand from the Russian middle class. So friends, as is all too often the case, things are not what they seem. And sadly, we don't seem to be able to rely on the mainstream media to report in an even-handed and balanced manner. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>